I just bought a brand new-ish Demon 170. And to answer your question, no, I did not learn from the last one. But hey, we already brought one Demon back to life, so when I got the opportunity to save a thousand horsepower, eight second Demon 170, I couldn't say no. The last Demon was bad, but this one by every possible metric is somehow worse, which I genuinely did not think was possible, but at least the last one was all in one piece. This one's in, well, significantly more pieces than that. It's a assemble your own Demon 170, I suppose. Brand new. Well, Technically, we don't know much about this Demon 170, at least not yet. The only thing we do know is it was stolen, recovered, and found its way here to Copart. But at this point, all that's in the past. The only thing that matters now is we own it and it's up to us to get it back on the road. The chassis on this one, it's about as bad as bad can get. It's cut clear through the driver and passenger A pillars. The floor, that's cut clean across. Now we do have the pieces they cut off, though I'm not sure what good they're gonna do us. One thing they made sure to get rid of though is this VIN plate. They hacked that clean out. Now as for the back of the chassis, it's better than the front, which I realize isn't saying much, but at least the quarter panels, they're pretty much intact. It does have a little bit of damage down there on the rocker. One body part I was really excited to see when I showed up here this morning was the trunk, though they did take the Demon 170 specific spoiler off it. So again, that doesn't really do us a whole lot of good. Though I suppose there's a chance it's in the car somewhere. Most of the body panels they cut off look to be here. This is one of the front frame rail sections. This is the passenger door, the driver door is in the car. Unfortunately though, the body panels that are missing are far and away the most important ones. The front bumper, the headlights, the hood, all the special body work, that's nowhere to be found. But I'm not even gonna complain about it because all the stuff that makes the Demon 170 truly special like this three liter blower the engine the transmission even that big rear differential it's all still here basically what i'm getting at here is these thieves were horrendous at their job this is like taking a 20 dollar bill off the floor and leaving a stack of hundreds on the table as weird as this might sound to say the chassis is kind of unimportant we can figure that out at least at the end of the day it's still just a dodge challenger this pile of parts here is honestly why i bought this Unlike the 2018 Demon, which is roughly a glorified red eye, there's a lot of parts on this one that are unique to the 170 and the 170 alone. Almost all the engine internals are different. Even the block's a different color on this one. It's yellow, which I believe is a nod to the fact that it runs ethanol. The throttle body, it's massive. Same deal with the blower. It's got a different crank pulley on it as well. Then there's things like the differential, which is huge compared to the old ones. There's the axles, the drive shaft, which that one has seen better days. We're gonna have to do something about that. Performance aside though, it's truly impressive when it comes to this 170, which has had just a terribly hard start to life, is it looks, keyword looks, like this engine survived without any major damage. In fact, the only thing I can see is a broken tensioner, a chipped up crank pulley, and frankly, not much else. Being that I bought this thing before I ever laid eyes on it in person, that's a massive win that I didn't expect. And then there's things like the Demon 170 specific gauge cluster, which yes, it probably has water damage, but maybe we can fix it. One thing we got that I'm so, so incredibly happy to have is the serial number Demon badge. It's number 32. It's one of the first ever to come off the line. This is one thing I was never able to source for my demon and it still to this day feels like it's missing a part of demon history. So yeah, maybe it's hacked in half and it came with one single Hellcat seat that definitely didn't come from this car, which I suppose means they were moving through a lot of Hellcats in this chop shop. But I was able to pick up everything you see here for 20 grand flat, which is $176,000 less than the insurance company paid out on it. Personally, I think the engine's worth that alone. So the fact that there's just parts on parts buried inside the car we can just consider this kind of a bonus the only real way we're going to know what we have here is to get it back to the shop and rip it apart let's go Someone definitely lowered this door. Call me crazy, but when this was packed tightly on a trailer, it didn't look that bad. One of the hardest parts of bringing home some wild, stupid, dumb new project like this is really trying to figure out where to even start with it. Lucky for us though, we had an eight hour ride home from Detroit to come up with a good plan. 
think we got one. What we're gonna do is rebuild this demon before we rebuild this demon. We're gonna take all this garbage sitting on the floor and fit it up roughly loosely where it went on this car originally. What that's gonna do, hopefully at least, is let us get a better idea of what's missing or damaged. And I guess in some way, shape, or form, that's the first step on the road to recovery here. One piece of this whole crime scene reconstruction that's really easy to figure out are these pieces. These are the front frame rail cuts, which go roughly right there. More or less the right place. It's like a big Lego. Yeah, Legos fit a little better than this. Our HVAC box, that is gonna go somewhere about right there. And unlike the last demon, I want everything that functioned properly in this car from the factory to still work once we get done with the build. It's not so much that we really need heat or AC in this build, but I do want to keep the AC specifically so I can use the inner chiller system for the supercharger. This goes here. Uh, do you notice that? Yes, the first thing I noticed when we sat this next to this, these are different blues. Oh, uh, hold on. Look at that curvature there. I don't think this is for a Challenger. I think this is a Charger. It is, it's close. But this is definitely not from a challenger the challengers they're straight across this has to be from a charger i don't have one here to compare it to at the moment but i believe that's how they look i think this is going to be one of the biggest challenges with this car when the police bust a chop shop like this there's no guarantee that we have all the right parts here and now we know that's not the case if the seat didn't give it away before the next piece that i'm certain i know where it goes and i think this one's even for the right car the front bumper beam for the rest of the stuff in here, we got C pillars, so little HVAC ducting, another rear pillar, we got a piece of carpet. None of that's really that important. This though, this is something I saw buried under there the whole time and I was praying it was in good condition and it looks like it might have survived. On the 170s, they did carbon fiber not only around the radio bezel, but around the center console. Not only do they look awesome, they are just obscenely expensive. And while we do have that little gouge on the radio bezel along with the dashboard, our center console, the carbon looks minty fresh. The whole console, in fact, looks really nice. This piece goes in there. And the reason why it's probably out is this red straps, which you have to pull to get the shifter out of park if the car doesn't have a key in it, which is, of course, probably how they stole it. So when we picked this up, I saw a plug hanging out of the chassis. Didn't know what it was till until right now they left their grinder not only that their sawzall blades in here seeing stuff like this it kind of makes me think they might have got busted literally in the process of cutting this thing up i don't think it got found somewhere they might have got found while they were doing it but hey we got a free grinder i have an idea fernando what i'm willing to make a deal if you have my demon seats hood front bumper headlights i'll trade you this grinder i'll give you your tools back you give me my parts back fair fair deal Fair deal. Fair for everybody involved. Sounds good. Especially considering where the grinder was and the fact that there's a half done cut through the floor here. I really think they got caught while they were doing it. Definitely. And at the same time, they tried to cut it right here. So two failed cuts halfway through the car. Obviously, we're just guessing here. This is all speculation. But if they did get caught halfway through doing it, our engine could have been minutes for being gone. That would have been, well, we wouldn't have owned it if the engine was gone. Either way, we got the brake pedal. They left this, which... Fernando, honest opinion, does that look like it's ever been touched? It looks brand new. Brand new, and I, that's not exaggeration. I mean it. It looks like nobody's ever put their foot on this. This is our rear panel. Sorry. More glass that I think came out on the ride home. We got our dome lights. Yeah, that's about right. What else? AC lines. Yeah, I think, yeah, this is the valve for our uh, inner chiller system. We got a curtain airbag, bring that out through the back. 
We also have our brake booster here. You look concerning. This one's curious, and I could just definitely be wrong about this, but I don't think this is from this car either. All the demons, the Hellcats, the Red Eyes, they all have an oil cooler that goes in the passenger side grill. This one's the same deal, but it's for the driver side. And as far as I know, only the cars that have an auxiliary heat exchanger over there have this, meaning only Hellcats. The cars that have the intertiller system on the intercooler pump, I don't think ever came with that. Also on that note, one thing we did find in the car yesterday that was laying right on top is our intercooler pump intertiller assembly. This is like 1500 bucks. It's insanely expensive. So I'm super happy we had that in there. That though, that's pretty much going to do it for the interior. We have some weather strips, some more HVAC ducting, a few speakers. Now though, we get to hit it from the back and this is the part that really counts. This brake lines that run all the way to the rear of the car. These are the same as every other Challenger, so I'm not too concerned about having those. They're all bent up anyway. An AC line, we'll hold on to that. We have another curtain airbag. Nice of them to leave these though. They're not vend and these are in super high demand, so I'm surprised they didn't sell that. Those are what, three, four hundred dollars each on eBay? And you got two, right? Dose. Having all that stuff, it's nice, it's great, don't get me wrong. But what's really gonna make this project a challenge is the electrical system. Maybe I'm just scarred from the last one, but I do have a sneaking suspicion that that's what we're gonna be fighting here. This guy, this, clearly had to come from another car because ours is up there in the dashboard. I don't know what we're gonna do with this. I guess we'll run some part numbers on it and try to figure out what it's for. That being from a different car, it's not the biggest deal being that we have the right one. This though, if this is from a different car, it's a main body harness, or at least it looks to be. If this is from a different car, we're, it's not gonna be good. What we're looking for here is anything, absolutely anything, to let us know that this is from a demon, whether it be through part numbers, though my concern there is this stuff so new that it might not be in Dodge's system, at least what we can find online. We just need to know this is original to the car. This is our suspension controller. They all have that. This is our rear battery tray. Not that this is evidence or anything, but it does look brand new, which fits for this car. I don't know if there's anything demon specific in the fuse layout. At least one thing we can be sure of, it looks like it's a dual fuel pump car. So it means even if this isn't for the demon, it'd have to be for like a red eye. And let's see. Yeah, there's our dual fuel pump modules. So that backs that up. I know this doesn't necessarily help us answer our question, but we do have the front engine bay section of the harness and the back section of the harness. So assuming it is from the right car, we've got the dash, we've got the engine, we got the front, we got the back. We should have the entire wiring system out of the car. From a module or a specific identifiable connector standpoint, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. So we're gonna just have to start Googling part numbers off the thing and hope we get lucky. This is the first tag I found on the rear harness. When you Google that, nothing comes up at all. This would be our big ECU connector, which is something we don't have. The ECU, the body control module, that's nowhere to be found. At this point, we've looked over essentially every inch of this harness. I've ran the part numbers. I couldn't find anything except that the front harness was for 2023 Challenger. Well, we got Luke on the phone here from Steve White Motors. He helped out a ton with the last Demon build, and he confirmed that. Yeah, both, both the harnesses that we just talked about, the part numbers that you gave me, the, the last one was 5036151 Alpha Charlie. And based on the serial number of the vehicle that you have, that is the correct harness for that vehicle. That is a massive, massive help. That's going to make putting this thing together a lot easier because if we needed to order that harness, he said they're no longer available, period. There's none of them. That's at least one thing that could have led to a major delays when it comes to rebuilding this thing that we're not going to have to worry about. That's the good news. The bad news, though, is I was hoping to find a little bit more when we pulled the wiring harnesses out. I was hoping maybe, I don't know, the ECU, the body control module, all that stuff would have been under there. Instead, we just get a glove box. It does have the last eight of the VIN number on it, so I think even though it might not be in the best shape, we're gonna hold on to all that stuff because it's proper, it matches the car. I don't really know that the whole numbers matching thing is gonna to apply to this car when we're done, but I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. We've got the rear parcel shelf. We don't need that, we have another one that's mint condition. This is a front seat belt, I think, which, if they're from this car, and I think they are, that's a massive win. They are not cheap.
enough wasn't until right about now that we get the full idea of what's missing on this thing. And as far as the body's concerned, it's everything, literally everything. On the interior, while we do have some of the most important stuff, now that we pieced it back together, you can see just how far they stripped it down. The rear end, that's not much better. We're missing everything. Tail light, bumpers, fender flares. We do have the trunk, but it's all jacked up. And at this point, it's probably good for not much more than using as a chalkboard to keep track of what we need to source. And I know everything I just said sounds like terrible news, but I spoke with our guy Luke for like an hour yesterday and 99.9% .9 of the parts we need to get this thing back on the road, I can still buy them straight from Dodge. Except of course the chassis, the frame of the car, that's one thing we can't get from Dodge. I was hopeful that they were still producing the body and whites that I saw at SEMA a few years back, but it turns out when the production of the Challengers ended, they stopped making those too. And I know in the last team, man, we rebuilt the chassis that probably in all honesty had no business being rebuilt, but given that this one's cut through every major structural area, I just don't think it's a good idea. I genuinely think the only way to safely rebuild this car is to reshell it. And to find our perfect shell, I'm going right back to Copart, where they have everything from piles of parts like this Demon 170 to minty fresh stolen cars like the gray Hellcat, which we unfortunately can't use for this project, being that I have something else in the works for it. Maybe we find something lightly wrecked or even flooded. It just can't be cut in half. Now that we got the chassis sorted, Sorted-ish. We can move on to the drivetrain, which looks even nicer than it did when we saw it at the auction lot. I guess I just assumed we were going to find all kinds of damage on this stuff. After all, it's been from the chop shop to the Detroit police impound lot to the co-part and then to here. All while having been drug around, dropped, and presumably even flipped over at one point. And somehow, even having gone through all that, it looks like the only damage we suffered to this front suspension assembly is a cut ABS wire and a cut shock connector. The suspension itself is all perfectly fine. The calipers, they do have some cosmetic scratches, but I'm really not worried about stuff like that given the shape of the car. These we can easily refinish. We can powder coat them. We'll take care of that. But the control arms, even the tie rods, which I think would probably be the most likely thing to bend if it got dropped, they're perfectly fine. The sway bar did get pulled out of its mount, but I don't think it's damaged. So it looks like we got away with almost a complete front suspension. I think you had a shock problem. That is absolutely none of your business, buddy. I'm just saying. Technically, he is right. We do have shaft problems. The CV joint on the end, that's just missing. Now, I think all this damage came from towing and transport, though they do supposedly have issues with these braking just from normal drag racing use. These Demon 170s, they do have much larger output flanges on the transmission and a much larger input flange on the diff, meaning these drive shafts are huge, they're thick, and they're specific to the 170. They have their own unique part number, but this does come with a downside. They are $4,000, four grand. And just so we can, <laughs> The face that you just made behind the camera. When I saw that, honestly, I was sick. The thought of spending $4,000 for a drive shaft that might break the first time we take it to the track anyway, it just, no, just not doing it, can't do it. Luckily though, Rip a Tune's making a carbon fiber option. It's still 3,500 bucks, but I'll take a $3,500 drive shaft that probably won't break versus this, that definitely, most certainly will break the way we're gonna use it. Oh my God, that is heavy. Definitely heavier than a stock Hellcat one, which supposedly that carbon fiber drive shaft we're about to order saves like 25 pounds as well. Now that we got that out of the way though, the diff spins like it should. There is some play in it. I don't think that's too abnormal though. The only other major or at least costly damage we have to account for here is the struts. Those guys, they ain't too straight either. Just like our drive shaft, I think he's just got beat up for getting tossed around in the tow lot. One thing I did find kind of cool in these, I don't know why they did it exactly, but in addition to the part number, they have the last eight of the VIN on the plastic that goes above the strut too. I don't know if this was Dodge's attempt at trying to track stolen parts on these newer cars. Regardless, at the very least, it's gonna make for a lot of cool souvenirs to come from the car. And speaking of cool, check out the Direct Connection logo on the back of the diff cover. Now, I know they did use that logo on a few different parts of this car instead of the DEMA logo like the 2018. One place I found it a little weird though, the headlights. There's a light up Direct Connection logo inside the headlights. It's also gonna 
gonna be one of the hardest parts to obtain for this build. And it's also probably a really easy way of identifying stolen headlights. So if any of you guys happen to see a set of Direct Connection logo <laughs> headlights, just let me know. I have a grinder I'll trade somebody for. It. <laughs> that aside, back here on the rear, there's really not much damage. The wiring harness, the connectors busted off of it. This is, this is the fuel fill neck that's not even supposed to be there and that's seen better days. We're not gonna worry about that. The only other thing we have to source back here is the springs, which are just straight up missing. Besides that, it's basically the same as the front. Scuffed up brake calipers. I'm sure the rotors have a chip or two in them. All in all, as far as the front and rear cradles go, at least it's really not gonna take much to get them squared away and ready to go into a new chassis. Well, except the wheels. I forgot about this. Now, the first thing I did when I bought this car is ran a VIN check on it. I was trying to see which wheels it came with. And of course, it came with the carbon fiber wheels, which as you might assume, based on the term carbon fiber wheels, they are not cheap. Let's hear it. Take a guess. Five grand a piece. $30,000. 13 five each. $11,500 each. Needless to say, that's not in the cards. The cars that didn't get specced with carbon fiber wheels came with an aluminum option. They're about four grand for the entire set. So I think I know which route we're gonna go. Unless you wanna trade them for your grinder back. I'm not sure that it's technically possible for a project that looks like this to go downhill, but if it is, this is where it might happen. At least this far, I've kind of just went along assuming that we got a good engine here yeah we know there's tons of little damage on it. the tensioner the crank pulley in fact every pulley has at least one chip in it so we're probably going to need to replace all of them one piece we're definitely going to have to replace is the oil cooler this definitely got drugged maybe under the engine at some point the line section got ripped clear off it the lines themselves they're jacked up so this is essentially just trash at this point the rest of the lines on here this is I believe the fuel line, that's all flat, and we're just gonna replace that. The shifter cable, the end of that's ripped off. Even the transmission connector, the tab's cracked, though I think that's still usable. At the very least, we can repair that. I don't think we're gonna have to replace the engine harness or anything like that. An O2 sensor wire, that's broken. Otherwise, though, there's not a whole lot of major damage on here. The coil packs, a couple of them are damaged. You can see where this thing was dropped. It hit right there on the corner of the valve cover. Think it survived though. A couple of our passenger coil packs, they're cracked. Our heat exchanger lines, they're all bent up. The good news with this stuff is most of it at least is the exact same as a regular Hellcat, meaning we have spares already here in the shop. Whoa! <laughs> the engine ain't damaged, but you're about to damage that. What's the weight rating on this thing? Oh, too much. Yeah, we need to start removing stuff. Anyway. <laughs> the exhaust pipes, they're not supposed to be stacked vertically. This one should be about right there. I can't tell if they're bent or they're just misaligned on the mounting flange. Actually, the bolt itself is bent. Come check this out. Ooh. These oxygen sensors look like they've never been ran, period. This engine might not have ever been it run. <laughs> that looks like it never got ran, doesn't it? I mean, you've got this much cat in before. Correct, correct. Let's pull the primary out. That one looks, I mean. I mean, there's some carbon. A little bit, yeah. That has some more, easily, the cleanest O2 sensor I've ever pulled out of a car. That's supposedly a running, driving car. Yeah, for maybe like 50 miles. We haven't got a real good chance to look inside this thing until right now, and there is a little bit of soot, but I, I mean a little. I don't know if it's sad, funny, crazy, whatever, but the weird part here is, yeah, weird, we'll call it weird. We might never be able to find out the mileage on this car. I have one idea that we're gonna try after we do a little more work to the engine here, but if that doesn't work, we're simply not gonna know. I ran a VIN check on it, and that has what I guess is delivery miles. It said 11, but after seeing this, I wouldn't be surprised if it genuinely has 11 miles on it. Are you actually mentally prepared for this? <sighs> sort of. This, it just brings back bad memories. Three, two, one. Oh. Last demon, it was full of water, but we kind of knew that one's gonna be jacked up. This one, it shouldn't be. There's no good reason it would be, but it did sit outside for a while. The throttle body was exposed. Luckily, the oil cat was still on. There was nothing wide open for rain or other water to get into. 
But you never know, and that is terrifying on something like this. Now, I already checked the dipstick at the lot. I didn't see any water, but the thought of gallons of water pouring out of your demon engine just never really goes away. Oh, that's the right stuff. That's the good stuff there. Oh, we are fine. Look at that. Just like those O2 sensors, too. Brand new. Brand new. Wow. So not only is this not full of water, as I was saying, it looks brand new. This is the point of fully confident saying I'm super happy with the car we just bought. More so with the engine we just bought the car. Well, it's not a car. Is it me or looks like green? So in the pan, it does look kind of green. I think that's because the engine wasn't fully broken in. They may have even ran E85 or ethanol through it. And if you've ever ran a fresh, fresh engine, especially a race engine like this, sometimes it can get a little bit of fuel in the oil and look exactly like this. And I guess while we're under here, it'd be dumb to not check the transmission fluid, which unfortunately the transmission oil pan, this one's caved in pretty good. The engine oil pan, this survived because it's cast aluminum. This is that really thin sheet, so we are gonna have to replace that. Ooh. I had honestly thought, wow, and I haven't changed an HP one of these gear oil before. I thought it was going to be the red stuff like you see in GMs. That looks brand new. It all does. At this point, we've said that looks brand new to practically everything on this. Put your guesses in the comments right now. How many miles do you think this has based on what we've seen so far? I'm going with, I don't know. When we first picked the thing up, I said less than a thousand. Now I think it's less than a hundred. My guess would be 163. Green, slow viscosity, smells bad. ZF8 speed fluid. It's like, bueno or no bueno? Uh, it's good. It's basically brand new. It's got like 32 miles on it. It's like 25 bucks a quart though. Ooh. 25. <laughs> I should have drained to a clean pay. We should have saved this. Shit. Now we got to try to get some answers. I want to know how many miles are on the thing bad. And the only way I can think to do that is to try to plug this gauge cluster into the other demon. That's 100% possible that the mileage isn't even stored in the gauge cluster. It could be in like the BCM or something. But hey, I think it's worth a shot. You got $2,000 in your hands. Actually, that's not sarcasm. This is worth a ton of money. One other thing we're gonna have to make sure of before we put it in the other demon is that it's not all corroded inside from water damage, which I don't think is unlikely given that the stuff's been sitting outside for so long. It doesn't look wet from this angle. It just looks really nasty and dusty, but let's go ahead and pop this off. Oh, that looks minty, minty fresh. Check that out. So it was laying this way up in the dash. So if one side of it's messed up, it's probably gonna be this. Brand new. I don't see any reason to believe this had any kind of real damage to it. It looks good to me. Let's go stick it in. In addition to the fact that this just may or may not work, my other concern is that it actually damages something in this demon, but right now it's a risk I'm willing to take. You ready? Yeah. We're in. Well, it's on. Well, oh. <laughs> 61 miles. Wow. Oh my God. This is one of those times I genuinely just don't know what to say. 61. That's cool in a sense. I mean, we got ourselves a brand new, we can just call this brand new, right, Fernando? Yes. We got ourselves a brand new drivetrain. But for somebody to have to go through their car getting stolen without even putting a tank of gas through it, that's. That's rough, that sucks, and I uh, definitely feel for that person. I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert on Demon 170s because frankly, up until I found this one, they weren't even in the realm of affordability for me, but from what I understand, that means on this engine, the trans brake's never been engaged, it probably hasn't had an oil change, it's really as new as new gets, even if it doesn't look that way on the outside. To think we have a 61 mile Demon, and we have 20 grand invested in it, even if it needs some minor assembly, I think by any metrics, it's a smoking deal. <laughs> really, minor? Really, my, it's, it's like Demon Legos. Yeah, minor assembly required. That's the, I can't think of a better way to put it, right? This has been fun trying to figure out what we have here. Now, 
now is when the real work begins. This is uh, this, this is a shell. Say it. S H E L L. This is a pile of scrap. Do you ever thought that you're gonna have shaft problem a forty? Um. Wait, hold on, forty. <laughs> I know what you wanna do. <laughs> I 